Hi everyone, it is Justin Paperni, the 14th of June, about 8.30 in the evening. It's been a long day and I wanted to knock out this video talking about why some lawyers don't like prison consultants. And it really, this video comes from um, something that happened earlier uh, today. Uh, before I get into it, a few bookkeeping items. I get about 100 emails or questions a month about various aspects of prison life or personally for me, so I've never really done this. I thought I'd answer a few questions, stuff like... Uh, J Justin, do you still get up at 5 a.m.? Uh, no, I actually get up earlier. I got up at 5 a.m. in prison. I get up at about 4.30 in the morning now. I start my days early. I'm still overcoming my own felony conviction. I work very hard to rebuild. And I have a family now. Um, in fact, let's pause for a second and look at... There it is. That's why I worked hard 20 hours a day in prison, despite not knowing, despite not having her in my life yet. It's the reason I work so hard now. That's a photo of my daughter, Alyssa. So... I get going very early. Another question, do I watch TV? Because I write a lot that I didn't watch TV in prison. Uh, I watch a little TV now with my wife, The Bachelorette, presuming she lets me provide a color commentary. I do like to watch a little golf and Millionaire. Uh, Listing New York is my favorite show. Justin, do you regret doing a TV show on your story? No, I told the truth. I figure NBC could spin it. If they wanted to, they didn't. I was pretty pleased with how it came out. Number four, what bothered you most about prison? The whistling. Even whistling now, I get like a shake in my neck. The whistling really troubled me. Number five, what books are you currently reading? For the fifth time, I'm reading Machiavelli's The Prince. So let's transition now into uh, the reason that I'm doing this video, uh, why some lawyers don't like prison consultants. And for clarity, I say some, not all. I'm not indicting all lawyers. I'm not, I don't want to do sweeping generalizations. Some lawyers, because I work with some terrific lawyers, um, that I proudly send my clients to, that I wish or I happily would have had represent me. Guys like Alan Eisner, Dimitri Gorin, uh, David Rosenfield, Nicholas Kaiser, terrific lawyers that care about their clients. They have the empathy, the sympathy. They're, they have all the, the attributes that you would want in a lawyer. So I want to be really clear. I'm not saying all lawyers. I'm just saying some. And this video comes as a result of a call that I got earlier today from a new client. For some background, on Saturday, a, client, a prospect scheduled a call. We spoke for an hour. Following our call, I spent about 90 minutes creating a scope of work. Uh, I reviewed the scope of work with him and his wife through Skype. They agreed. We agreed to a payment plan over four months, in part because it holds us all accountable and it's a way to ease into the relationship. Uh, it made the initial payment, and then uh, we began to prepare for his pre-sentence interview, which is this Thursday. So it's 8.30 now, and about three hours ago, I got a text from him that said, will you please call me? And I did. And it was not, uh, yeah, a few hours ago. He said, would you call me? And I did, and he's like, dude, my client, my lawyer went crazy. My He went crazy when he found out that I hired a prison consultant. Like, I, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, well, did does he know me? Did you tell him? You know what we discussed he's like he has no idea who you are that you wrote a book or anything he doesn't know who the hell you are he just knows that he loathes prison consultants and I don't think he's gonna work with you and like I don't know what to do and can you tell me what to do and I said hold on a second hold on a second my job is to make your life better and not worse so just relax everything's going to be fine what would you like to do and he's like well I'd really like for you to call him because I want to work with you and I need him on board what do I do and I said well, hold on what happens if he's not on board and he said, well, um, what are your thoughts? I said, well, of course you know what I'm going to say. We have a lot of work that we need to accomplish together. My suggestion is that regardless of the call that I'll have with your lawyers, that you trust your own judgment. And it was on Saturday during our call that you told me that it was your lack of judgment that allowed you to go into this mortgage scheme with people who were former criminals. And it was easy money and straw buyers. And you knew that it was wrong, but you gave in. So if you're going to trust your judgment, and that judgment says that I'm right for you and your family and your kids, then you should make that decision irrespective of what the lawyer says. With that said, it would be easier. It would be easier if he's on board. So he said, will you call him? I said, yeah, absolutely, I'll call him. So I did. I got off the phone. I called the lawyer, and um, is the phone was ringing to his law office, and he knew that I was calling. In my mind, I, I told myself, the exact reasons why he doesn't like a prison consultant, and many lawyers don't. And you know what? They're valid reasons. So as, as the phone was ringing, and I'm thinking about what I'm going to say to this lawyer, in my mind, I knew exactly what would come up. Example, a lot of consultants do try to play lawyer. 
it's a shame we don't have law degrees and because you were a jailhouse lawyer does not make you equipped to, to be a lawyer. And by playing lawyer, it puts the, the lead person, the lawyer, in an uncomfortable position by offering advice that you're ill-equipped to give. So I think it's important to remind all lawyers, and certainly on this call, I would, re I would emphasize to this lawyer that I sp stick with the prison advice, you stick with the legal advice, but there is no doubt people in my space try to give legal advice and it makes matters measurably worse for the lawyer and it can create some some problems because it's the lawyer that has to deal with the fallout, not the consultant. We're not lawyers. Number two, uh, Google prison consultants, Google life in prison. Um, Google how many people will tell you that prison is you know scary, and you need to hire them to you know not get beat up. So the scare tactics are are troubling, and it bothers me. Um, I know it bothers a lot of lawyers because it's very easy to be seduced or believe or buy into something that someone tells you. Just because someone says it doesn't mean it's true. Just because it's online and someone has a really nice website doesn't mean that it's true. I think that's the reason testimonials, like any testimonial that I post, has to have a first and last name because it's authentic. You can vet it. I even put the where my client's in prison and the registration number. It has to be authentic. There should be case studies and testimonials. You should say, I'd like to speak with some of your other clients to confirm. And I, I believe in that due diligence. But when you can't sell anything, you sell fear. So I know the scare tactics have bothered a number of lawyers over the years. And speaking generally, they probably presume uh, you know, that I do exactly the same thing. You know, another issue that I know, you know comes up a lot is the guarantee, right? Google that. I mean, go to some of these websites. They say, guarantee the residential drug abuse program. Guarantee the prison of your choosing. Well, what they might not tell you is the guarantee isn't really a guarantee. You can't deal anything with the bureaucracy that is the Bureau of Prisons. I mean, come on. Like Michael Santos loved to say, loves to say the BOP is the DMV times 100. To guarantee is unethical. It's a lie. And it puts lawyers in a bad position when it, it just puts them in a bad position. There is no guarantee for RDAP. There is no guarantee that you get the sentencing of your the prison of your choosing. You prepare, you adjust, you put measures in, in place, you collect the appropriate evidence, uh, but there is no guarantee. And I believe that anyone that offers that guarantee um, is, is misleading. And I think they have to offer that guarantee for a reason, because without it, they probably wouldn't secure much, much business. So I know the guarantee is troubling. Um, is very troubling to them. And I would say the fourth issue that, that lawyers over the years that I've spoken with who have addressed their concerns, and again, while I'm, all these things are coming in my mind as I'm making this call, there can be unethical practices when dealing with consultants. I have some clients that have said they spoke with another cult consultant that said to hire me, go deposit money in my bank account, and it's just crazy stuff. And, you know, there's no clearly defined scope of work. It's promises with very little follow through and at times saying one thing without that accountability and sometimes defendants can be vulnerable. I know I was. I would have believed anything. I gave 15 grand to a PR firm because they said they could push down my Google press release. Google owns the world. There was no pushing down my release, but they said something, I bought it, and I pulled out my credit card, I mean, so quickly. So there are vulnerable defendants, and I've worked with many of them, and I've cleaned up a lot of work that other consultants have done. And I'm not going to name the consultants. Some of them have stolen my work. They've stolen Michael Santos's work, and they post it on their site as their own. Do your due diligence. Ask where they came across it. But for these reasons, it's just four, and there are many. These four points that I that I mentioned, it's part of the reason that some lawyers loathe the prison consultants, and they're all earned. And, and I understand it. And I'm sure when this lawyer told my new client, I will not work with a prison consultant, it's these four thoughts that came to mind. And when I got this lawyer on the phone, he confirmed as much. And what I didn't do was, frankly, do what I did when I got out of jail, which is, yeah, I did a lot of cold calling and hustling when I got out of jail. I mean, I still hustle. But I didn't want to convince this lawyer why I was worthy. I think the record speaks for itself. I didn't want to say, you know, I wrote a blog in prison and a book, and I worked really hard to make amends, and I'm overcoming my bad decisions. Uh, I didn't want to sound like a sycophant, like I needed his approval. I didn't. What I wanted to do was articulate that I am aware of the concerns that he has about prison consultants and they're valid. And while I was on the phone with him, I wanted to point out some valid concerns that I have for lawyers. And I said, may I share them? And he said, you know, sure. I find that directness and honesty is best. And I said, while well, you loathe the prison consultant giving illegal advice, which is inappropriate, 
I have troubles with lawyers offering legal advice, offering prison advice. In fact, a few minutes ago, you said to me that you could prepare your client for prison, and you can't. Just like I shouldn't negotiate a plea agreement. You don't know what it's like to be a convicted felon, I told him. You don't know what it's like to stand for count. You don't know what it's like to visit with your family in federal prison. You don't know what it's like to spend 20 hours a day like I did in prison, hoping that someday you'd be married with a child. And that's the reason I worked 20 hours a day. I mean, what's your reason? I always ask my clients. So you should not be giving prison advice, I told them. You don't know about the complexities of confinement. You don't know what it's like to be suicidal and to have a shattered reputation. You don't. You don't. In fact, a few minutes ago, you said, you know, prison's boring. Guys get through it. Is that the advice you give your clients, that it's boring? It's not. It can be a wonderful opportunity. So we had this back and forth for a few minutes, and I spoke directly to him. And then I conceded a few points that he needed to hear because I didn't need his approval. I think my client was going to move forward regardless, but no amount of money would allow me to give in to my values, to say something that I thought he needed to hear for him to then call his client and say, okay, this is a good guy, let's give him the go ahead. I'm not gonna do that, that's what led me to prison. I'm not gonna do it. So I said, there are a few things you should know and that you have to consider if I end up continuing to work with our client. And he said, what is that? I said, my client has no idea what a good or bad lawyer is. I said, he's not a criminal. He got involved in a scheme. He has no idea what a good or bad lawyer is. He has no idea how to hold you accountable. No idea at all. I asked him, do you like your lawyer? He said, yeah, he's a great guy. But how does he know? And I shared with him that Joel Athey was my lawyer in Los Angeles. And it wasn't until I went to prison that I knew that Joel Athey was a phenomenal lawyer. But at the time, I'm, I didn't know if Joel was good or bad. Uh, no, no one was helping me. No one was guiding me. I didn't know if I should meet with Joel once a week, once a month, if when I emailed him, he should respond in a day, week, or month. I didn't know. So I made clear that I do play a role in holding, helping my clients hold the lawyer accountable because while I'm not indicting all lawyers, I have worked with too many good guys. And as I wrote about in my book, Lessons from Prison, too many good guys didn't work properly with their lawyer. And they felt that if they pushed and asked appropriate questions, they'd get dismissed. Not indicting all lawyers, I want to be clear. So much like they're assessing the prison consultant and making sure we're not offering legal advice and that we're being ethical and not engaging in scare tactics or guarantees, I need to make clear that they should not be dispensing legal advice and there will be a role to play in holding that lawyer accountable, which yes, it could create more work for the lawyer, no doubt. The biggest problem with white collar defendants is they're in total denial. Total denial with the head in the sand pretending this isn't taking place. So. We make matters worse on our family. We delay the healing that should begin sooner. So yes, I play a role if a defendant pleads guilty. I play a role in helping them embrace the reality of the situation, almost dumping a bucket of cold ice on their head and say, you're going to prison. This is going to be tough. It is time to prepare to prepare for this journey, to embrace the reality of the situation. Shaking someone out of denial is the hardest part. It's harder than rage, bewilderment, Denial is tough, and I can play a role in helping my clients own it. So we had this very sort of engaging conversation, and um, he was receptive. And frankly, I don't know what response he's going to give his client. Um, I'm not that concerned about it because I trust my client's judgment. I believe that he'll make a decision that's in the best interest of, of him and his family. And we had a connection because he could sense, or he knows, it's not that I've just been through it. It's that I documented it. I have that evidence. And I have a great deal of empathy because going to prison is tough, but you know what, coming home, home, coming home unprepared is tougher. So this is it. This is a little longer video than I wanted to do. I actually wrote a few notes, but I think I, uh, I, think I covered, you know what? I think I covered absolutely everything. Uh, to close, if anyone would love, of course, like a copy of my book, Lessons from Prison, go to federalprisonadvice.com. And lastly, I want to make sure that besides my videos, you're reading my blog. And it's not just blogs for me, it's blogs from my clients, like um, Charlie Jones wrote a blog from Bastrop, and David Applegate at Taft Camp. I wrote a, a piece about character reference letters. For those of you that are going for your PSR interview or at sentencing, you need character reference letters to help demonstrate that you're more than your criminal charge. I put a template up, the actual letter that I sent to my network in 2007. Um, when I ask for letters. A lot of supporters don't know what to include, what they should not include. For you females that might be going to prison, um, I have a blog up about one day in uh, my client's life at Victorville. Um, I'm going to be writing a lot of blogs, a lot of content, um, 
it's all about it's all about preparation. I'm tending, I'm running on, I'm struggling to close, I'm exhausted. I've been up since 4:30, but I wanted to articulate. There are phenomenal lawyers. I can't convince everyone that I'm a prison consultant worth working with, but if you're in that situation where a lawyer might not engage your consultant or me, I ask that you defer to your judgment and make a decision that's in the best interest uh, of you and your family. Thanks for watching. More videos to come. Um, I wish you all on your journey. Work hard as I did, and you'll emerge differently than the troubling data suggests. Good night.